Okay. Do you want me to, we'll just, we'll see what happens here. Okay. Mic check, one, two, three, four. Waiting for Don Aaron, one, two, three, four. I think so. I think we're, we may be about to come up here, so thank you. Okay, no problem. This, my phone's about to die. I need to charge this. I wonder if there's a phone charger over there. Can you hear me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, Sophie, can you run downstairs and get your mom's phone charger and you bring it me. to me? Thank you so much. Uh, all right, thanks, Alex. So you see our video, though, right? Wow. You should. All right, bye. I don't think he has any idea what he's doing. Parking. Thank you so much. Let's see if this will work. We may have to, here, let me see. Let me see this end of it. Let me see if this will work here. It probably won't because this is not a I think so. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you so much. I don't know. Hopefully soon here. We're still waiting.
Yes, this is Kim. Mic check one, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mic check one, two, three. Okay. Now with breaking news, this is a News Channel 5 special report. We are interrupting your regularly scheduled programming for a breaking news alert. One woman is dead and six others have been injured in a shooting at an Antioch church. This happened at the Burnett Church of Christ on Pin Hook Road around 1130 this morning. This is a live look at the scene from Sky 5. At this point, we know the gunman was wounded and taken to the hospital. We are still gathering information as this develops. We're told most of the victims were elderly. They were transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center as as well as Skyline Medical Center. Multiple first responders obviously on the scene there. They have blocked off a large area around the church to secure that area. And we do have News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis on the scene. Kim, what have you learned out there? Emily, what we just got here a moment ago, we did speak with a spokesperson with Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and they are telling us at this hour they have six patients who were transported here from that church. Two of those patients are in critical condition. The other four are stable. We're told the two patients who are in critical condition were shot in the torso or in their chest. We're told the other four people who were shot were shot in their extremities. They're telling me that's like their arms or their legs. As you can see, there are multiple Metro police officers on the scene. We are told they will give us an update as soon as they have more information. They would not release any information as far as how old they are or what type of patients they have here because of privacy laws, but they are telling us it is only one o'clock. They're not sure if they will be getting more patients, but they tell us they will keep us posted on their conditions. Again, six people are here being treated for gunshot wounds. Two of those are in critical condition. We will bring you another update as soon as more information becomes available. For now, we are live at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I'm Kimberly Davis, News Channel 5. All right, Kim, thank you. Here's another live look at that scene over the church. Again, this is the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pin Hook Road in Antioch. As Kim just told us, six people transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center after a shooting there earlier today. Two of those people are in critical condition. We're also told that the gunman was wounded in this shooting and taken to the hospital, but no additional details on that at this time. Church members who were not injured have been moved to a safe location in that area. You can see obviously a large area around that church has been blocked off. Multiple first responders on the scene. A very emotional situation as church members appear to have gathered outside trying to get more information about what has happened. We also have News Channel 5's Chris Conti in Sky 5 above that scene. Chris, what are you able to see from up there? I think it's probably because they're on 5 plus. Can you punt? Uh, yeah, we are above the Burnett Church here in Antioch, where we have been watching Metro Police kind of scour the area here. This is Chris Conti up in Sky 5. Uh, what we have been witnessing from the air up here is Metro Police and actually some of the bomb squad members have been going uh, in between a lot of the cars in the parking lot. It looks like they are uh, trying to check out some of
Looks like we've uh, lost communication with Chris Conti there in Sky 5 above the scene. We will continue to keep you updated on this developing story as we learn more information. Stay tuned to News Channel 5 on air and News Channel 5 Plus. And of course, we'll have updates online as well. Actually, I think we're going to go back out to the scene. We're expecting to hear from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron. He is addressing the media right now. That is Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron. He is getting ready to address the media shortly. We're hoping to get a little more information on what exactly led up to the shooting and more information as far as the number of people injured and who was involved. He should be talking any moment now. Actually, he's about to talk. Let's we'll hear from Don Aaron. We're letting out of Church of Christ at Burnett Chapel on Pinhook Road. A gunman arrived in the parking lot. One woman who was walking to her vehicle was immediately fatally wounded by the gunman who we believe then entered the rear of the church. Other persons were still inside the church building. The gunman opened fire on them. Multiple rounds were fired inside the church. At this juncture, six persons, six innocent persons inside the church were wounded by gunfire. They have been taken to area hospitals. The gunman was wounded by a self-inflicted shot, he too has been taken to a hospital. One of the uh, church members, upon seeing the gunman doing this action inside the church, ran up and confronted him. He was pistol whipped by the gunman. This particular church member has a handgun carry permit. He went to his vehicle, got his gun, came back inside, and according to him, it was then that the gunman shot himself. Uh, it is our belief that the gunman's condition is not life-threatening. Uh, he is under police guard right now at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, this investigation uh, is going to be continuing, obviously, throughout the day and into the coming week. Uh, the persons who were wounded, the innocents, uh, the fire department is telling me that one person appears to be more serious than others. But again, all of those individuals have now been taken to hospitals. Uh, I have three female gunshot victims who were taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Three male gunshot victims taken to Vanderbilt. That includes the shooter. Uh, the man who was pistol whipped has been taken to Skyline Medical Center. And there is one additional gunshot wound victim who was taken to Skyline. A reunification area for family members who had persons at the church today who are concerned about their loved ones. A reunification area has been set up at Beautiful Gate Church at 12316 Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, that is the uh, extent of the information that I have for you at the moment. The gunman has been identified uh, certain investigative steps are being taken in regard to that identification, and we will be uh, releasing his identity in the short term. Uh, I don't know. I don't have the names and the relationships at this point of the persons who were shot. We have police officers at the hospital interviewing them and gleaning information the best that they can from the gunshot victims as they're being medically treated. Uh, that is not true. To my understanding, the gunman was wearing a type of uh, neoprene mask, perhaps that you uh, might see on a skier, a snow skier, one of those half masks. Uh, is there any relationship that we know of to this uh, Not to my knowledge. Uh, we believe that the gunman is uh, out of Rutherford County. Uh, I am not aware at this moment of any relationship. And you just heard there from uh, Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron Again, with the very latest against six people hurt in this church shooting. We are continuing to follow this developing story on News Channel 5 Plus. The scene, the scene has been locked down. All of the victims were taken out by uh, 
ambulance personnel, by fire department personnel. The scene is locked down. You are joining us on News Channel 5 Plus with the latest on a developing story. Six people have been shot at a church in Antioch. Let's listen in as Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron gives us the latest. Well, unless they left before we got here. Uh, the call to the emergency communication center came in at 1115. Don, can you clarify? These vehicles were explosives right now. They have dogs that are just checking it out. Uh, he arrived here in a blue SUV. Uh, one of the dogs did hit on the vehicle. So uh, the hazardous devices unit did check the vehicle. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are no explosives there. Uh, it could well have been that the dogs hit on the vehicle due to the ammunition that had been either in there prior to the dog sniffing it or uh, that was uh, remains in the vehicle. Did police, uh, did anyone describe the, the weapon? Long All of the witnesses now are being interviewed. Uh, we have uh, early information that we need to corroborate. We need to make sure what's fact and what's not. So all of that, we'll update you with all of that uh, in the next in the next little while. Don, can you clarify the uh, church member who was pistol whipped after being pistol whipped went out to his car to get his his own gun, or that happened after he went to get his gun? He was then pistol whipped. No, it is my understanding that he confronted the gunman, and keep in mind that he gave us this story with. Uh, uh, significant injuries around his head. So he gave us uh, this account just before leaving for the hospital that he confronted the guy, was pistol whipped, and went out to his car, retrieved a weapon, came back inside, and then uh, the gunman, according to him, uh, shot himself in the head area. Did that trigger him to fire any shots? We do not believe so. He indicated that he did not. Again, we haven't checked his weapon. The weapons that were left in the sanctuary are still there. Are there security the cameras? Mid-20s. Do you know, are there security cameras inside around the church? I don't know. Any idea how many uh, parishioners were inside when he went in? Not yet. Okay, we'll be back. Uh, it's uh, uh, one twenty now. Uh, I'll make it. A, I'll make a commitment to come back with you at 1:45. Okay. Thank you. And that is the latest from the scene from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron. Again, updating us. Six people were hurt in this shooting at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ in Antioch. We also have News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis at Vanderbilt University Medical Center with the latest on what's going on there and the victims who were transported there. Kim. Emily, we just heard that press conference given by Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron, and it's making much more sense now. We understand why the Metro Police cars are here on the scene. We just found out that the gunman is actually being treated here in the hospital, according to a spokesperson with Vanderbilt University Medical Pol University Center. They are telling us that they have six patients here. Two of those patients are in critical condition. They were shot in either the chest or the torso. The other four patients are stable, thankfully, and they were shot in places like their arms and their legs. Now, as you can see, the officers are here making sure that that patient stays safe and they want to talk with him. According to the press conference, Don Aaron is saying that he has been identified. He is in his mid-20s. And then the person who came inside the church and confronted the shooter he was pistol whipped. It sounds like that person is also here when he ran back into his vehicle to get the gun and came back inside to confront the gunman again. That's when the gunman shot himself. According to Don Aaron, that other patient has a lot of injuries. He had a lot of injuries to his head and that's who the other person who is here. But Vanderbilt University Medical Center is not confirming who those people are, how old those people are because of privacy issues, but we understand we'll have a lot more information once Don Aaron's office comes back at 145 and we expect to hear another update from Vanderbilt University Medical Center once there is a update on those patients' conditions. Again, two people are here in critical condition and one of those people is in fact the gunman. Emily.
Thank you so much for that update from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Again, just an update on what we know at this point. Six people were hurt in a shooting at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. This is on Pin Hook Road in Antioch. Uh, we are hearing this happen around 1130 just as services were getting out. A gunman was in the parking lot and entered the church. That's when he opened fire. Multiple rounds were fired inside the, the church. Again, six people were hurt. The gunman was also wounded from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Three of those victims are women, three are men, all are at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Police tell us the gunman has been identified, but they're not releasing any additional information at this time. They're also speaking to witnesses at the scene as they continue to gather information out there. Uh, they're expected to give us another update around 1145, so we are waiting to hear more from Metro Police at the scene. We also have crews at the scene gathering information as well. We are told that family members who had someone at the church who may have been impacted by the situation can meet at the beautif Beautification Church on Old Hickory Boulevard if they are looking for a loved one who may have been involved or been in that area. Now we want to get the latest from the scene. Let's head out to New Channel 5's Alexander Cohen. Alexander, what are you learning out there? We just stepped out of the press conference with Don, Aaron, Emily, and this situation has been unfolding quickly. As we just learned, the gunman shot himself and he has been taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Six people who were inside the church were shot and then a seventh person was pistol whipped. According to Don Aaron, the guy who was pistol whipped tried to confront the gunman. This gunman was wearing a mask. The churchgoer tried to confront him. He was pistol whipped, ran out to his car because he has a gun carry permit to grab his gun. And once he entered back into the church to go after the gunman, Don Aaron, the Metro Police spokesperson, says that the gunman shot himself. Again, this was an active shooter situation. I had chill bumps going down my spine as we listened to the scanner traffic. Multiple church members called in. We interviewed someone who skipped church today. They came to the scene bawling. There had been rumors that the pastor may have been shot. However, police have not been able to confirm that at this time. But again, we did want to recap what happened in the press conference. We're waiting to hear more shortly. There's also a bomb squad that was called out here. A canine officer actually is searching the blue SUV associated with this gunman. One of those canine Officers actually got a hit, which means they smelled either an accelerant, ammunition, or explosives. At this time, police believe that the dog just smelled the ammunition. They did not find a bomb inside that gunman's vehicle. Again, we did want to update you guys because if you're watching from Sky 5, you probably saw those canine officers and bomb squad officers circling that SUV. But again, six people injured. The gunman is also injured. And then a seventh additional person taken into Skyline who was pistol whipped. As soon as we get any more information on this unfolding situation, we'll make sure we pass it along. Emily, back to you. All right, Alexander, thank you so much. And as you can see, obviously, still a very active scene out there as first responders are there. They've blocked off an area surrounding the church as they are talking with witnesses and gathering more information on exactly what happened. Um, we do have Chris Conti over that scene right now in Sky 5. Chris, what are you able to see from that vantage point? Well, Emily, we're starting to get a, a better idea of exactly what kind of was going down on the ground there as we just got that update from. Focus some attention now onto the back of the church. Looks like we've just lost Chris Conti there. We apologize for that. He is over the scene in Sky 5. We'll hopefully be able to get back to him shortly. Again, a very active scene out there as uh, first responders are out there trying to get more information on what happened. We just heard from Alexandra Cohen, who's at the scene, saying people there are still very emotional. Obviously, church goers have gathered in that area waiting to get more information. She said it's still a very tense situation there. Let's head over to News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy. He was in the News Channel 5 newsroom, also helping us gather information on this developing story. Dan? Amy, we're watching a lot of uh, condolences pour in on Twitter as well as this story uh, only continues to gather steam. And as we continue to learn more information, no doubt we're going to hear from more people throughout the day. Right now, we're hearing from Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, who's saying, quote, we are closely monitoring reports of a church shooting in Antioch. As we wait more details, please join me in praying for the victims. Also, Bill Lee, who is a candidate for, uh, for governor uh, coming up in this next term, he says, Maria and I are praying for 
for our brothers and sisters in Antioch at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. So still we're going to be watching as plenty of more of these come through. Uh, condolences not just from dignitaries and other politicians, but uh, Emily, condolences from a lot of our own neighbors thinking and praying for, what's, uh, for what these people in Antioch this morning at this church are going through. Back to you. So much and as Metro Police told us this was just a normal service at the church as people were getting out of the service. That's when shots rang out as a gunman was in the parking lot and then entered the church opening fire firing multiple rounds inside the church. That's when again six people were hurt inside the church taken to the hospital. We're told three men and three women are now at Vanderbilt University Medical Center getting treatment. The gunman was also wounded from a self inflicted gunshot wound. We are also waiting to hear more from the pastor of the church. Obviously, they're in the thick of all of this as it was going on. It's certainly been an emotional day for him as well as church members who may have witnessed part of this. Um, again, the gunman w was wounded from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We're told actually one of the church members confronted the gunman. Uh, that church member was pistol whipped, injured in that exchange, went out to his car to grab a gun. He has a carry permit, went back into the church, approached the gunman, and that's when he saw the gunman shoot himself in the head. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres is standing by with the pastor of the church. I'm sure this has certainly been an emotional situation for him, Matthew. At this particular time, there's, there's, there's no reason that we know of. The report that uh, uh, Don gave, the guy just came in and started shooting. So I don't understand it. Is that, did the shooting take place outside the church or inside? No, well, one, one of the ladies got shot outside, according to Don Aaron. And then he, the guy went inside and, and started shooting multiple times. And you said your son texted you. Is your son a church member? He is. And he's a member of the Church of Christ, but not there. He was formerly. He was a youth minister there at one time. And uh, he, he's over at the Highland Church of Christ now, and I'm at the Gilroy Church of Christ. So we're different places. And I'm sorry, I might have missed this, but can you talk about the community of this church? Who went there? All different ages, races? Um, it is kind of predominantly an older personnel and people. Um, it, it is, uh, it's mixed. They're, they're African Americans as well as uh, Caucasians. And, and, uh, I know several of the people well. I know the preacher well, Joey Spann. He's a good guy and long time teacher and basketball coach at Good Pasture. And I assume he's still at Good Pasture. I hadn't talked to him in the last several months, but I assume that he's still at that. You know, my trick on that. Well, there's, you know, there's several new ones that have come in since I was there, but um, uh, it's a pretty close-knit congregation, it really is. Very friendly, open to everybody, anybody's welcome to come, and uh, I would imagine your congregation here is the same way. And, uh, so. Were you able to speak to members who were not injured? I have not. They, they, they're all sequestered at this point and I, uh, I do know that uh, uh, some of the women that I knew are uh, okay. I talked to the son of one of the members and he said his mother was fine and she supposedly was being sequestered until given an opportunity to. As someone who was the former pastor of this church, just really what's going through your mind at this moment? Well, you hear about these things on television from time to time, and uh, you just don't ever think it's going to be here. You don't think it'll be your church. And uh, uh, we began a gospel meeting at the Gilroy Church, and we were eating. Uh, we had a covered dish meal after services, and I was eating when I got the message. And of course, I left and came right on over. But uh, it, it, yes, it's a, it's a, it was a close knit group. What would you like to say to anyone watching this? Obviously, a church is, a, is an area of solitude and of peace. What would you like to say to anyone that may be obviously fearful of anything to come? Well, we never know what today's going to bring. Uh, so uh, God expects us to live our lives in a respectful, Christian, Christ-like way. And, and I would just say to everybody, uh, let's start loving each other. Let's, let's just uh, uh, 
let's, let's, let's quit having all these fusses and taking sides. Let's, let's learn to love one another. It's all about learning to love. Do you think the service was just ending when this happened? It was, that's what I was told, that it was just ending and one lady had walked out of the building and into the parking lot and she was immediately shot, according to Don Aaron. Do we know anything about the shooter? No. Don said, he, said the shooter appeared to be in the mid-20s, but that's all. He, he said nothing else about who he was or anything. So no one recognized who this person might be? No. No. If we can speak to the, the pastors here uh, of uh, Beautiful Gate, obviously this is just less than a quarter of a mile away. Being so close to you guys, what goes through your mind? Just like the... Elderly just said, this is heartbreaking. Uh, when you come to the house of worship, uh, you feel safe inside. But then when you hear things like this, um, it makes your heart to ache because uh, members are now sitting on edge. Uh, will I be able to go to church? Am I safe? So we are now in a dangerous society. Um, so we just need to come together, bond together, and see how we can live through this situation. What does the church have planned? Uh, we were told this is the reunification area. We are very happy at that because uh, we are one in Christ and we are ready to receive them anytime they want to come and worship with us or we worship with them. We are one in Christ. It's just the name that divided us, but we are serving the same Christ. Have any members shown up here yet? Uh, yes, we have um, maybe one who just went inside now. I've never met any of their members before, but uh, uh, Pastor Mosby lived very close to this uh, man that was shot. They are living in the same neighborhood, so they knew each other very well. So I'm just hearing about this myself, but um, they knew each other quite well. Who, who do you know that was shot? Uh, the pastor and the pastor's wife. Um, just, uh, we live in a cove, and they live at the top of the cove as you come into the subdivision. So a few times I've uh, been coming here and uh, the pastor has been walking uh, down toward the church and I would give him a ride uh, ask him if he needs a ride uh, his wife uh, just recently this past week came by our house uh, and my daughter um, took her to the store to get some things so uh, we've been living in this neighborhood for about 17 years and uh, we've seen them come in and out and I've spoken to him and spoken to his wife also. Very, very nice man, uh, Pastor Span. And uh, uh, my heart goes out to, to the family and to the whole church. Uh, as the pastors and they have said, you, you, you come and you come with the expectation of uh, sitting down and having a service and not thinking about what can happen around you. And you never know uh, who's going to come to the door or for what reason they would come to the door uh, and come to your church and, and do something like that. But we're always on guard, and uh, we just thank God that many more weren't hurt uh, during this time. So our heart goes out to them, and our prayers go out to them, to the family, and to everyone that's been hurt. Do you know the condition of the pastor and his wife? Uh, all I heard was he had been shot uh, in the shoulder area, upper area. Uh, I heard that the wife had taken a direct hit. I'm not sure uh, what part of the body uh, that is. So uh, just my heart just goes out. Um, I, I, I work in surgery uh, at St. Thomas Midtown Hospital. Uh, I've seen gunshot wounds, and I know how bad that can be. So uh, it just, you know, my heart just goes out to them. What is the pastor's wife's name? I, I cannot remember her name. Um, all I know is that, uh, I've seen her and I've spoken to her a few times. How did you hear they were shot? Uh, during our service, um, the email came to let me know there had been a, a shooting in the area. And then, uh, then another uh, text came and told me that it was the church. So I went to the website, uh, News Channel 5 and Channel 4, Channel 2, and and I saw that uh, the actual church just behind us was where it happened. Uh, one of the members here uh, told me, come to, and told me that uh, where the pastor and the pastor's wife had been shot. Uh, 
uh, he had heard. So that's how I got that information. And they had a child, they had more, more than one children? I believe they have more than one uh, grandchildren. Uh, also, we see them at the house. Uh, we've seen many people at the house um, uh, coming in and out. Uh, we see the pastor, I see him every morning uh, when I'm up and he's getting ready to go and leave. and. We wave and speak to each other, uh, so there's, there's generally a lot of activity going on. What's the pastor's name? Joey Spann. And how old is he? He's an older gentleman. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. He's probably in his 60s. Okay. Um, he's an older gentleman, but very nice. Sorry, very one nice. more time, the pastor's name? Joey Spann. Spann. Do you, do you get the sense that he often invited people to his house from the church, you know? I've or? seen members... Come, uh, I've seen um, um, more than once, uh, multiple people there, people from the church there. Uh, every summer they have a vacation Bible school and the whole community is invited. Uh, so they open their doors to, to just about anybody to come in. Uh, so they've been a blessing to this neighborhood. What is your first and last name? Uh, I am Michael Mosby, pastor. I'm the this is a senior pastor, and I'm one of the pastors here at New Beautiful Gay Church and Ministries. M-O-S-B-Y. M-O-S-B-Y. What's your name, sir? My name is Gideon Olaleye. Spell it. Gideon Olaleye. O-L-A-L-E-Y-E. Yes. And Gideon... How do you spell Gideon? G-I-D-E-O-N. Just the biblical name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both pastors of the church. Of yes. Beautiful gay. Thank you. Thank you. And you just heard there from New Channel 5's Matthew Torres, who is outside the beautiful Gate Church on Old Hickory Boulevard. This is near the scene of the shooting. This is where family members have been meeting up with their loved ones who may have been at the church or are just waiting to get more information. You heard from the pastor there who told us that the pastor of the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ and the pastor's wife were both shot in this shooting earlier today. The pastor, Joey Spann, and his wife. We don't have any additional information on his condition at this time, but we are told that he was shot in this exchange with a gunman that happened around 1115 this morning again at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pinhook Road in Antioch. This happened as uh, the service was letting out. People were walking out. The gunman was in the parking lot, entered the church and opened fire. That's when six people were shot. We are told that three of those victims are women. Three are men. They were all taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center where they are getting treatment right now. The gunman was also wounded uh, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Um, we are continuing to follow this developing story. We are breaking into your regularly scheduled programming here on News Channel 5 to bring you a breaking news alert. Six people have been shot. One person is dead after a shooting at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ in Antioch. This happened around 1115 at the church on Pinhook Road. We've had crews there all morning gathering information uh, as we continue to learn more about this developing situation. This is a look at, live, at Sky 5 over the scene. We also have News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis at Vanderbilt University Medical Center where six of the victims were transported. Kim, what are you learning there? Emily, we've learned that two of those six people are still in critical condition. The other four are stable at this hour according to a spokesperson with Vanderbilt University Medical Center. He is not releasing the ages of those victims but according to a spokesperson with Metro Police we've learned that that gunman is one of the people here at the hospital. As you can see there is a police presence here. We are told they are here waiting with that gunman and they want to ask him some questions. We are also learning that all of the six victims were transparent It looks like we're having some technical difficulties there with Kimberly Davis outside at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. We will check back with her shortly. We also have News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy in the News Channel 5 newsroom uh, following this story and, and getting reaction as well. Dan? Yeah, we're starting to 
See reaction pour in from politicians and dignitaries and no doubt reaction will be pouring in from our own neighbors here as we continue to learn about what happened exactly at this Antioch church at about 1115 this morning and just to recap a bit what Kim was telling you at that hospital. She's outside Vanderbilt where we know of at least six patients uh, where they were taken for treatment, some more serious than others. The gunman is also there and you saw that security there. The police outside of Vanderbilt, they are actually there to guard the gunman inside of his room. We're told that he may even have non life threatening injuries with a self inflicted gunshot wound uh, after this incident about again 1115 this morning over on Pinhook Road. We do know six innocent people were shot. One woman was shot and killed in the parking lot of that church. Identities on these victims still unknown as we are learning their ages. We do know that many of them are over the age of 60 uh, from this church and this church shooting in Antioch. Uh, once we get the gunman's identification, we're going to start digging into a bit of his past. Emily, we do know that Metro Police themselves have identified this gunman. They have not yet shared his identity. So as we continue to learn exactly about his motive, certainly that's something the police department is looking into at this hour. We will continue to do so as well. Emily. As well, getting more information on this developing situation at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. Uh, we are told that there was an older congregation there, a very close knit group at this particular church. Um, church members who were not hurt have been moved to a safe location. Family members can also meet up with them at the beautiful Gate Church on Old Hickory Boulevard, and that's where News Channel 5's Matthew Torres is. Uh, he just spoke with a the pastor there to learn more about what's going on. Matthew? And Emily, so far we are told there is one uh, member with that church here at the moment, uh, kind of getting water and getting whatever they need in order to at least uh, put some sort of normalcy together. Again, we are just outside of beautiful Gate Church, which is just less than a quarter of a mile away from the Church of Christ. And so far we do have a gathering with the pastors that we interviewed just moments ago. Um, we are told, according to the pastor, that he learned that the, uh, the pastor and the wife were both shot. Uh, the pastor was shot and the wife. Uh, and so far, things are still developing at this moment. But again, one person, one church member is here right now. Police have called this church the reunification area. And uh, we are not seeing a flood of people here just yet because we are told they were kind of being sequestered. The members who were not injured in the shooting are kind of being held together at this point. I would assume to be interviewed uh, further from this. Now, what's also interesting is that we also interviewed the uh, former uh, church pastor and he says he received a text from his son. They came by here and from what he was told from members is that the gunman again shot that lady in the parking lot before going inside the church and opening fire. Talk about a scary situation. We don't know exactly if this uh, service was wrapping up but no doubt, uh, really frightening moment. A lot of members here at the beautiful Gay Church, they're just kind of lingering around surely to see what they can do to help out at this moment. But we are just talking about less than a quarter of a mile away. So although we don't know the cause, this is something that's really hitting them hard because this is uh, this was a place of worship where you're supposed to feel safe. And so what the church members and the pastors here are wanting others to know is that they are still in full support. They are praying for everyone involved in this shooting. And again, it's just a frightening moment uh, knowing that this did happen in a house of worship. We are waiting to see if there are any more people who will be coming here to the church. Again, so far, we have one person. As soon as we get more information, of course, we will pass that along. Emily, back to you. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. Of course, he is not far from the scene where the shooting occurred at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pinhook Road in Antioch. That area is still blocked off, still a very active scene out there as first responders are out there working to gather more information. At this point, we do not know what led up to this shooting, but uh, officials are there interviewing witnesses. They have identified the gunman, but she they are not releasing good, any additional information on him at this time. We know the gunman was injured in this exchange from a self-inflicted gunshot wound and is currently at Vanderbilt Medical Center. That's where News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis is as well, keeping us updated on all of the six victims who were transported there. Kimberly? Emily, we just saw another church vehicle pass by us. Now, it wasn't the church vehicle 
of the church that was just victimized like this, but it looks like a lot of the churches are coming together. Of course, it is a huge church community here in Nashville. We just saw a vehicle pull into the parking garage here at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Six victims are here at the hospital being treated by Vanderbilt University Medical Center doctors. We spoke with a spokesperson here and they're telling us that they are still working on those patients. Two of those patients are in critical condition. They suffered gunshot wounds to either their chest or the torso area. Again, critical injuries. And the other four people are stable. Thankfully, at this hour, they were shot in places like their arms and their legs. We have learned that the gunman is one of the people staying here at the hospital receiving treatment. If you take a look over here, there are multiple Metro police officers here on the scene. They are waiting for him to get the OK and they are waiting to speak with him and, of course, take him into custody after this tragedy unfolded on a Sunday morning. People were getting ready to go into church. As we've just learned, one woman was shot and killed in the parking lot trying to go into church just to worship on a Sunday morning like millions of people do all across the country. So, of course, this is just a tragedy that has unfolded early this morning around 11:15. The Vanderbilt University medical spokesperson tells us they will give us updated information as soon as they learn more. Again, they are telling us this is still very early, but the good news is six of those victims of the six, four of those are stable and the other two are critical. We are hoping to get good news from the doctor shortly uh, with information that their condition is improving. So stay with News Channel 5 for the very latest. For now, we are live at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I'm Kimberly Davis, News Channel 5. All right, Kim, thank you. And of course, first responders still at the scene gathering information. We are expecting to hear from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron again very shortly. He told us earlier he would be giving us another update at around 145. We are still waiting to hear from him. Again, still have a lot of unanswered questions as far as more information about the gunman and what possibly led up to this shooting. But at this point, we know that one person is dead. Seven people were hurt in this shooting at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pinhook Road. Um, News Channel 5's Alexander Cohen is at the scene. She has been gathering information all day. Alexander, what are you able to tell us about what's going on out there right now? We're actually at the media staging area where police have been giving us updates here. You can see we are still waiting that next press conference as we speak. But what we have confirmed is six people have been shot. An additional church member was injured when he was pistol whipped. According to police, that church member actually confronted the masked gunman, and that's when he was pistol whipped. He ran out to his car to try to get his personal gun, and when he ran back into the church, the gunman had reported shot himself. He was taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center for treatment. Again, we're waiting on Don Aaron to come and give us a press conference right here. As soon as he does, we'll make sure we bring that to you live. Emily, back to you. Alexander, thank you so much. And as she had mentioned earlier, obviously still a very emotional situation out at the scene there. Church members were gathering, trying to get in touch with family members, trying to get in touch with people who may have seen something or been a part of this. This is a live look from Sky 5 over the scene. We will continue to keep you updated on this developing story, both on air and online at newschannel5.com. We are bringing you a breaking news update after a shooting occurred earlier this morning at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pin Hook Road. Right now, one person is dead. Seven people were hurt. That includes six people who were shot at that church as services were getting out around 1115. A gunman entered the parking lot, entered the church, opened fire, firing multiple rounds inside the church. Again, one woman was killed. The gunman was also wounded, uh, had a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It turns out one of the church members actually confronted him at one point. Uh, the man went out to his car to get his own personal gun when he went back into the church. That's when he saw the gunman shoot himself in the head. At this point, we know three people have been transported. Three women have been transported to Vanderbilt. Three men have been transported to Vanderbilt. That includes the shooter. 
They are all getting treatment right now. We have crews following this all over the area, including New Channel 5's Dan Kennedy, who is live in the newsroom tracking some reaction to the situation. Dan? Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon to you, Emily. We are starting to get reaction from local politicians. Just about everyone who is a dignitary in this state is adding their thoughts on Twitter at this time. And just to touch briefly on what you mentioned, we're starting to learn about some of the heroism that went down at this church today, including from uh, that one member who saw this active shooter situation unfolding, went out to his car in the parking lot after confronting to the gunman and was even pistol whipped at one point. Uh, apparently this man is a handgun carry permit holder. And when he went back into the church with his gun, that according to Metro Nashville police is when uh, this gunman then pulled the gun on himself with a, a self-inflicted gunshot wound now being treated at Vanderbilt. So Emily, as we start to learn a little more about uh, the severity of the injuries, not only to the gunman, we're told perhaps non-life threatening injuries for him. We're also tracking certainly the conditions of those other six who are now at Vanderbilt. And as you mentioned, also some of the responses pouring in, including from Senator Bob Corker, who at this hour says we are closely monitoring reports of a church shooting in Antioch. Please join me in praying for the victims. Jeff Yarbrough now weighing in as well as Tennessee State Senator here from uh, District 21 in Nashville saying all of Nashville stands with the congregation at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ and the victims of this evil and violence. Emily, back to you. All right, Dan, thank you so much. And we are expecting to hear from Metro Police at the scene very shortly. They told us they would be giving us another update around 145. We're obviously a few minutes past that, but we are waiting to learn more about what they are doing out there at the scene uh, to learn more about the gunman and other people who may have been involved. Again, we were told that the pastor of the church, who is an elder, uh, Joey Spann, was shot as well as his wife. Uh, we are waiting to learn more about their conditions as well. They are among the three men and three women taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center to get treatment. We have New Channel 5's Kimberly Davis there tracking their conditions. Uh, we also have crews on the ground, including Alexandra Cohen and Matthew Torres, who have been talking to people who witnessed this. Obviously still a very emotional situation out there. We also have News Channel 5's Chris Conti, who is in Sky 5 above the scene. Chris, what are you able to see from that viewpoint? Well, Emily, probably the most interesting thing that we've been observing from up here about 1,200 feet above this scene for the last hour or so is what Metro Police have been focusing on, some of their attention in the parking lot. Even though uh, Metro Police spokesman Don Aaron said that it appeared that there were no explosive devices found in the parking lot or in the car that possibly belonged to the gunman, we still have been watching some of the bomb squad members working pretty feverishly as we switch our shot here uh, on this. They've been focusing their, their attention on this blue uh, Nissan Xterra. They have set up some of their equipment. Uh, it, it doesn't appear to be that they're using a robot to go into this car, uh, but there was some thought that there may have been some kind of ammunition there. Uh, but again, really the entirety of what we've been watching from the air up here in terms of actual activity going down on the in the ground there where this shooting happened in the parking lot is uh, the focus has been on this SUV. We're not sure uh, the importance of it, who it may belong to. Uh, again, something else worth mentioning here, uh, you know, Matthew's over where a lot of these people are being reunited with some of their family members. Uh, th this happened so quickly uh, that a lot of these folks didn't even have a chance to get their cars out of the parking lot. You can see in the upper part of your screen there. Uh, still, a lot of cars parked just as they were as these churchgoers were just trying to go about their normal Sunday routine to go into the Burnett uh, Chapel Church here in Antioch. It uh, just kind of gives you a, an idea of how quickly all of this unfolded. Uh, Metro Police have a good section of this area cordoned off. People are not going in or out. Uh, we can give you a little bit a better lay of the land, Bob, if you want to pull up just a little bit. Uh, we are kind of right on the edge of Percy Priest Lake. Uh, we are probably about five minutes from Elm Hill Marina. Uh, we are kind of on the back side of the lake here just to kind of give you a better idea uh, of where we are and where this scene is located. Uh, again, what we really haven't seen too much of is actual uh, ambulances or anyone uh, kind of coming and going because from what we understand from everyone on the ground there, folks have been transported already. Uh, most of the activity has been taking place inside the church. We're going to continue to monitor uh, what Metro Police are doing in terms of that car with the bomb squad. And if we have any updates, we'll bring them to you, Emily. Chris, thank you so much for that update. And New Channel 5's Matthew Torres is standing by at the beautiful Gate Church. Again, as Chris just mentioned, this is not far from the scene of the shooting. Matthew, what are you learning out there? 
Emily, we are less than a quarter of a mile away from where the shooting took place. This is what police have called the reunification area. We spoke to the pastors. In fact, we also spoke to the former pastor of that Church of Christ where the shooting took place. And with me right now uh, are the sister, uh, excuse me, the daughters of the pastors of this church. This is very difficult for you guys as we saw earlier. What would you guys like to say right now is obviously this is a very much a developing story and as you guys will be accepting members of that Church of Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're just praying for them, um, hoping that they're okay. And um, we just spoke to them earlier this week. Um, I helped the mom. She needs to go to the store, so I took her. Um, whenever she needs anything, she comes down to our house. So we're just hoping that she's okay and that her husband is okay. And you're talking about the pastor and the pastor's wife. Yes. And how would you describe that church? We heard from the former pastor. This was a very close knit, but it also seems like they were great neighbors. You guys were neighbors of the people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, a fantastic church. Um, they're very unified every time we see them um, doing anything within the community. They're all very unified. It's a big family, but they are very, very accepting. And so far, how many members from that church are here? Do we have any numbers? Um, I've seen two. Um, I've seen some drive up. Um, I don't know if they're scared to go in because we're all here. I don't, I don't know why, but the doors are open and we're here and we're praying for you. So. And what would you guys plan to do once they are here? Um, pray for them. Um, you know, make sure they have a sanctuary. Um, make sure that they are safe and let them know that we're here for them. Is there anything else you guys would like to add? Obviously, a very difficult situation. Uh, you've been very emotional as well. Is there something you would like to truly, for anyone watching, to know? Um, we're just praying that they're all okay. Um, we don't know why something like unnecessary like this happened, but we just pray that they're all okay. Okay. So, so far, a couple of uh, church members are here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys, do we know how long you guys will stay open for? Um, as long as they need it. Um, yeah. We're not a church that shuts down just because it's time for us to go. So, yeah. I mean, just as long as we need it, we're going to be here all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as far as the plan, it's pretty much a very fluid and open plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. Again, these are the daughters of the pastors of Beautiful Gate. Uh, that's now considered the reunification area. And just like they said so far, two members from that Church of Christ are here right now. So far, we have seen other people come to the door. We're still going to try to find out and hopefully get more information to you guys as this coverage continues. Emily, back to you. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. As you can see, church is coming together to help people impacted by the shooting. I also want to update you. We just received a statement from Mayor Megan Berry. She said in part, quote, this is a terrible tragedy for our city. My heart aches for the family and friends of the deceased, as well as the wounded victims and their loved ones. Their lives have been forever changed, as has the life of their faith community at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. My administration, especially the Metro Police Department, will continue to work with community members to stop crime before it starts, encourage peaceful conflict resolution and promote nonviolence. We are also expecting to hear from Metro Police very shortly. They are at the scene. They will be giving us an update on the situation. In the meantime, let's head back out to News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis, who is at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, where again six of the victims were transported earlier today. Kim? Emily, that's right. Six of the victims are here at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, including the gunman. Now, since we've been here in the last 15 minutes, we have seen up. We'll come right back to you. We hear uh, the spokesperson with Metro Police is about to speak. We'll take it live. You okay? Everybody good? All right. What I'd like to do is kind of start from the beginning of the scenario with some updated information from the last briefing. The police department received a call of an active shooter at 1115 at Church of Christ Burnett Chapel on Pinhook Road. The church was letting out at the time the gunfire occurred. From what we know at present, a gunman who was wearing some type of neoprene half mask over his face arrived in an SUV. We are told that he immediately confronted and shot dead a woman in the parking lot. He then entered the main sanctuary door, which would have been, if you will, the rear of the sanctuary, remembering that the pews are facing forward. So he would have entered the rear of the sanctuary or the main sanctuary door. 
Uh, after doing so, he began indiscriminately shooting. There was a church usher who confronted the gunman. During the confrontation, the church usher was pistol whipped. There was a significant struggle between the two. During the struggle, the gunman shot himself, probably not intentionally, in the left pectoral muscle, in the left chest. He is at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. His condition is believed to be non-critical. He is under significant guard by the Metro Police Department. There are a total of six other gunshot victims who are being treated. Uh, some at Vanderbilt, uh, there is one gunshot victim being treated at Skyline Medical Center, as well as the church usher who was pistol whipped. Now, after the gunman suffered this self-inflicted wound, the church usher, who does have a handgun carry permit, ran to his car, got his gun, came back in, and made sure that the gunman didn't make any more movements until the police department arrived. Uh, we have officers at the hospitals confirming names and conditions of patients. Understand some of them are still receiving medical treatment, so I don't have an update for you on their conditions since the, uh, I spoke to you 30 minutes ago. Know that we're trying to get that. There are officers there who are trying to make that happen. Uh, we have identified the gunman. Uh, he is a 26-year-old African-American individual. Uh, the police department is working now to develop more information about him. There are certain things that need to be done before we announce his identity and release his photograph, and those things are happening. I still expect to identify the gunman in the short term. Any more information about the weapon used? Uh, no. Again, the scene is locked down. Someone asked me earlier how many people were inside the church at the time. Uh, I'm going to approximate it at about 50. I know that uh, we have 30-something in a side building on the church campus, air-conditioned side building, who are being interviewed by our detectives. Uh, someone asked about children. Well, we think at the time the shooting uh, was occurring, the children uh, mostly were not in that immediate sanctuary area, from what we've been told. Uh, all of the gunshot victims are adults from what I know at this moment. Do you have an idea how long he was here prior to entering the church or encountering that first moment? I will tell you that uh, his vehicle was parked beside the church and uh, when the police department arrived, it was still running. Uh, it would appear that he was uh, not expecting a brave individual like the church usher to initiate the struggle and confrontation. And it was during that uh, that the gunman was wounded. Uh, this uh, gentleman, this church usher, an extraordinarily brave individual, uh, he was still here at the scene when I got here, and uh, he had uh, what appeared to be significant injury to his head. He was bleeding about the head, but he was still able to move uh, on his own. He uh, was able to walk into the ambulance on his own, but this was uh, an exceptionally brave individual. Six, six wounded, one deceased, and the suspect also wounded, is that correct? So there would have been a total of nine individuals, including the gunman, who had some type of injury. Uh, you've got the gunshot uh, victims, the six innocents. You have the gunman. Uh, you have uh, a, uh, well, actually, uh, uh, you have the gunman, then you have the man who was pistol whipped. And then the woman who was deceased. And then the woman who was deceased, that's correct. Do you have an approximate age of that woman? I do not. I do not. Uh, uh, the deceased woman is in close proximity to the suspect's vehicle. Uh, specially trained police department dogs have conducted uh, sniffs of the suspect's vehicle and the dogs are continuing to alert on the vehicle. Uh, part of the vehicle has been breached and we can see uh, some things that we don't know what they are inside the vehicle. They may be nothing, they may be something. Our hazardous devices unit, the bomb squad, is here. They are working to secure the vehicle and make sure that the vehicle is safe. The vehicle has not been declared safe at this moment.
Joey Spann, the minister, do you know if he was one of the six? I do not know. I've, I've asked about whether the minister uh, was one of those wounded, and I don't have names yet on the persons wounded. Again, we have officers at the hospitals who are working to gather that information, but keep in mind these persons are also receiving immediate medical care. Don, did anyone manage to run out of the building altogether? Witnesses are being interviewed now. I don't know that. I don't have the scenario uh, from a witness other than what the church usher has been able to report, the man who confronted the gunman. I assume there's federal law enforcement agencies. Yes, the FBI, the ATF uh, are here. Uh, certainly there is uh, a concern about potential federal law violations, and they are working with us, yes. At this point, do you all have any indication of motive? Um, that... Uh, remains uh, to be announced. Uh, there are certain things that have come to our attention that are under investigation, but that remains to be announced. All right, I'll uh, uh, come back. When I can get solid victim condition information, I'll be back with you. Our people are working on that. It shouldn't be too much longer. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Don. And you just heard there from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron giving us an update on a very fluid situation at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. We did learn that the gunman has been identified as a 26 year old African American man. That is all the information they're able to release at this time, not releasing any additional information on the people who were shot. Again, six people were shot. The gunman was shot and another church member was pistol whipped in an exchange with the gunman. Uh, News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis is standing by at Vanderbilt University Medical Center where some of these victims were transported. Kim, what's going on there now? Well, it's still a very fluid scene, Emily, as you can see. We are still here as well as Metro Police officers guarding the gunman who has also been transported here to the hospital. Again, six patients are here from that shooting, including the gunman. Now, police say they have identified him, but they have not released his name. All they have said is that he is a 26-year-old black man and gunfire broke out once church service was letting out again one woman was shot and killed in the parking lot and that's when he went back into the church and opened fire on the other victims there again six patients are here there are two other patients at area hospitals and we are told the two of the patients here are in critical condition one was shot in the chest and the torso area we're also learning that the, the gunman was also shot in the chest, but according to Don Aaron, a spokesperson with Metro Police, they are telling us he is stable at this hour. From last update from Vanderbilt University Medical Center, they told us the two people who were critical were both shot in the chest. I will reach back out to the hospital and see if that condition has changed and give you an update as soon as more information becomes available. Live at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Emily, back to you. All right, Kim, thanks so much. And again, just to recap, if you're just joining us, a breaking situation here. We have six people shot at a church in Antioch. This started at 1115, the Church of Christ Burnett Chapel on Pin Hook Road in Antioch. We just received an update from Metro Police who said that church was letting out at the time. Uh, there was a gunman in the parking lot with some kind of mask on. He confronted a woman in the parking lot, shot and killed her, then walked into the church and just opened fire. Uh, there was also a church usher in the t church at the time, confronted the gunman. He was pistol whipped in that exchange, but witnessed the gunman then shooting himself in the chest. The gunman has been transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center, as you just heard from News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis. We also have News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy in the News Channel 5 newsroom, keeping us updated on how people are reacting to this situation. Dan? Emily, just in within the last uh, five minutes or so, we've received an email uh, a statement from Mayor Megan Barry. I want to flash that up and let you know what she is saying on this Sunday afternoon. This is a terrible tragedy for our city. My heart aches for the family and friends of the deceased, as well as for the wounded victims and their loved ones. Their lives have been forever changed, as has the life of the faith community at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. My administration, especially the Metro National Police Department, will continue to work with community members to stop crime before it starts, encourage peaceful conflict resolution, and promote nonviolence. The Metro National Police Department at this hour 
working on identifying the gunman's motive. Uh, certainly that is a big question that remains to be announced at this hour. But Emily, it appears as if at the end of that news conference, they may be on the track of something. They say they are still uh, looking into every bit of this man's life, a 26 year old believed to be from Rutherford County. And uh, they are also still at this hour going through his car. Again, this is a gunman who is expected to live after it's believed he accidentally shot himself shot himself during a scuffle with uh, a very heroic church usher. And uh, certainly we'll be hearing the stories of the heroism coming out of that church in days to come. Emily. Now with breaking news, this is a News Channel 5 special report. And we are following breaking news. One person is dead. Six people were shot at a church in Antioch. This happened around 1115 at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pin Hook Road again in Antioch. Uh, we've been receiving updates from Metro Police throughout the morning. Here's what we know at this point. The church was letting out at the time when a gunman wearing some kind of a mask arrived in an SUV. He confronted and shot a woman in the parking lot of the church. He then entered the church and started shooting. Uh, a church usher happened to be inside at the time. He confronted the gunman, was pistol whipped in that exchange, ran out to his car to get his personal gun. He has a carry permit. When he went back into the church, he saw the gunman shoot himself in the chest. Metro Police obviously on scene now collecting information. They have blocked off an area around the church. We know that uh, the six victims, three women and two men have been transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. That includes the shooter. Police have just released a little more information on that gunman. They have identified him as a 26 year old African American man. They have not given us any additional information at this time and have not released any information on a possible motive, but do say that the bomb squad is out at the scene inspecting the gunman's car. They are also talking with witnesses as you see a shot of Sky 5 there over the scene. They've blocked off a large area as they continue to collect information and lock down that area uh, to find out more about what exactly happened. We are told that there was an older congregation at this church, but a very close knit congregation. Um, church members have been moved to a safe location just down the road at the beautiful gate church on Old Hickory Boulevard. That's where they are meeting up and uh, family members can also go there if they are looking to get more information about what happened or meet up with their loved ones. Uh, we've also talked with people at that church. Uh, they obviously are still very emotional and upset being very close to this scene, very close to the people at the church, um, and they are doing what they can to help as well. We will continue to follow this developing story on News Channel 5 Plus and also on NewsChannel5.com. We continue. We continue to follow a breaking story out of Antioch. One person is dead. Six people were shot at a church there. The church, the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. This all started at 1115 this morning. We have been developing following this developing story ever since as first responders and police are still at the scene working to get more information. We have just learned that the gunman has been identified as 26 year old African American man. No name has been released yet. That's all police are comfortable saying at this point. He has been transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center where he is being treated after uh, receiving a self inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. Police obviously on scene at Vanderbilt as well, keeping a close watch on him um, and other victims who were transported there as well. We know three women and three men were hurt in this exchange. All have been transported to Vanderbilt. Now, some uh, members at a church nearby tell us that they believe the pastor, the elder of the church was hurt as well as his wife. However, we are still waiting to get that information confirmed from police. You see Sky 5 here over the scene of the church, the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. Uh, police have blocked off an area around that church. They are they have the bomb squad at the scene. They are inspecting the gunman's car right now looking for more information and and trying to determine a possible motive. What led up to this shooting? We of course have crews on the ground in multiple locations, including News Channel 5's Matthew Torres, who is at the beautiful Gate Church just down the road at Old Hickory Boulevard. Matthew, what are you hearing there? Well, Emily, we actually just made our way inside. We wanted to show you once and if those members do come here, they have this whole space available 
for them. They have the kitchen, they have the tables and uh, uh, chairs here. Whatever they need, they are available for those church members if and once they do get here. And so far, we've been in touch with the church members here at Beautiful Gate. Of course, this is a very devastating day for them, knowing that just brother to brother, sister to sister, we are just quarter of a mile away. So we do know District 33 Councilwoman Antoinette Lee is here right now talking to two other church members. We'll hopefully get more information as soon as possible. Emily, back to you. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. And New Channel 5's Alexander Cohen has been at the scene all morning. She is in the process of talking with one of the church members. Let's listen in. Yeah. Was he telling? Yeah. Shot? Yeah. Were people running or were they just crouching on the ground? That's the thing. Our church mostly senior people that was running in when he came and started shooting from behind. Yeah. Did you hear it first or see it first? I hear him first. It was, you know, so so fast. Just a commotion. Yeah. How many yeah. shots did you hear? He shot a bunch of times outside, and then inside he shot more because he shot from the front of the church too. I know he has a mask on, but do you have any idea who this man might have been? No, no, no. We know each other there in that church, and I never, you know, see him before. So they came in from the back of the church, but he made it all the way to the front of the church as well. No, he came from in front of the church from the parking lot and he was shooting and then he stand in the pulpit and he started shooting more and looking to his left and that's when he came in the front in the middle and then this guy came and fighting with him and tackling him down one of our youth group one of the guys from youth group and he was younger the the usher that tackled him a younger guy I, I, 20 years old but you know he's Six feet, five feet tall. Anybody looks small next to him. Yeah. yeah. So the gunman made it all the way up to the pulpit? The pulpit, and he shot a couple times, and he came back, and uh, he was trying to go to the front of the door again. Was he saying anything? He don't talk. He don't talk. He just keep holding the hand, like, like the gun like this, and, you know, like moving like this. How are you feeling? He wasn't even running. He was like, I don't know. Not even in a hurry. No, he, he was like, like this. Can you talk about your dress? Were you trying to help one of the victims? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Stan? Yeah. Do you have any medical training or just knew what to do? I, I work at VA hospital and oh. I just check and everybody looked like leg and, and he was the most critical one and I just jump on him and the other lady, Amrila, and I just grab her shirt and just start putting pressure on her. Plus Boy Scout training. <laughs> How are you feeling now? I, I just, like, it's like, you know, you see in the news all the time, and you never expect for you to be in, you know, in this kind of situation. But we are a little church. We are like 60 members, that's it. And mostly our senior people, we don't bother nobody. We were celebrating because yesterday we have a yard sale, community, and it was a success and to send the kids to, uh, you know, Bible camp next year and everybody was happy and that's the reason so much people was in the lobby because we were celebrating that. Yeah, all uh, the people now, how are the survivors inside? Are they all? Uh, oh, they find, you know, the kids are making puppets and yeah, everybody's hungry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody's hungry. Yeah. It's gotta be hard to just, you said you mentioned it on the news, but hard to just fathom this happened here. Yeah. Their own small church. Yeah, I just trying to call my family for the lady know, hey, we we okay, we okay. The good thing all the kids was in the in the room, still in the, in the room, the class and good thing he don't went that way. You know, I, I would lost it, but yeah. Has Pastor's you know? been able to speak to you while you were helping? Yeah, him? yeah. He was like a take out my time, okay. Yeah. Do you know anything about the, the woman who was outside? Uh, she don't, she's not a regular, you know, her, her aunt was there, her aunt was being talking, you know, being hugged, and she needed, yeah, she, she wasn't shocked, and, yeah, no, I don't know, the, she comes on time, but not all the time. You might tell me your name one more time. Minerva. Spell that. M-I-N-E-R-V-A. And your last name. Rosa, R-O-S-A. How long have you been going to church here? Eight years, eight years, eight. Yeah. Can you talk about the pastor. What was he like? What the ministry? Ah, he's awesome. You know, he he's a coach, a basketball coach. Everybody in private school here know him from Easter Harding and Don. He's he go to another one. 
Donelson Academy, I think. Yeah. He's an amazing man. How do you spell his name as well? His first name. J O E Y or Span S P A N N. What was he speaking about when this gunman walked into the church? We were speaking about um, Matthew, no, Ma no, Luke chapter 8. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the woman who was cured of the bleeding. And Jesus was asking, like, uh, who touched me? And everybody, are you crazy? Everybody's here touching you, sorry. And we were talking about that. That was the... Having been in the church there for eight years, you must know the community. Kind of from this day forward, how do you expect the community to... Do you know you know, we was here talking, like, we was like, we need to do a blood drive after this, you know. We was talking about that. Yeah, we was looking to the future. Did everyone get on their phones to call 911? I don't know. I was talking to 911. I, I, you know, I assume, like I say, it's a bunch of seniors. I love, don't have cell phone. I just talk, call 911 as soon as possible. You did? Yeah. Personally? Yeah. I know, like, two other people was talking on the phone 911 too. Was help here very quickly? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Can you describe the gunman's demeanor? I know you mentioned the way he was walking, but how was he acting and what was he wearing? He was not acting, he was just in the same position the whole time, you know, like holding the gun and just going to, to the front, you know. And then he just stay and look and uh, he just came back the same way he came. No, he don't say nothing. He don't say nothing. He don't say nothing. He just, he was shooting. Did you recognize him? Mm -mm. No, because he have a long black sleeve shirt and a mask. Yeah. yeah. He had a mask on? Yeah. Did he look like he had any kind of armor or anything on? Or was he wearing just regular clothes? I don't think he had armor because he looked mighty skinny. Skinny? Yeah. You know, he don't look like a bulky guy. Yeah. And he was not tall either. Ah, uh, he's amazing, Caleb. Um, he, he, yeah, he tackled him. And he was, you know, he was hurting his head, and without him, and he, I, I think it can be worse. Yeah. He was a hero today. Yeah, he was a hero today. Yeah, he, him and Pastor Joy, because Pastor Joy is the one who started saying, uh, "Run, run, run!" It's gunshots, you know. Caleb, C A L E V B. Yeah. He, yeah, he tackled the guy and taken with the restoration to the police camp. Yeah. You saw Caleb gosh, running with a gun. I'm nervous. You step up a little bit. Could you just come right here? Um, when you saw Caleb tackle the gunman, I mean, what was going through your head? Really? I just thinking here, what the fuck is happening? To be honest, like, sorry, I wasn't sure, like, because, you know, it's all this fire, and, you know, finally, you know, Caleb is in the top of the guy like this, and. So at that point, Caleb got his gun? Yeah. I think he's, I don't know who's going what. I just saw. But he, Caleb yeah. had a gun uh, yeah, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks to him, you know, yeah, he, yeah. He, he can be worse, because he was running again, and he don't look like he was going to stop. Just one gun, you think? It needs to be more than one because that little gun don't hold that many, and it was more than those things used like six things or something. And you heard more and than that? It, yeah, way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Rosa, R O S A. Yeah, she did. So okay. And you just heard there from one of the members of the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ describing a very tense situation that unfolded earlier today when a gunman wearing a mask opened fire inside the church. Uh, she said that he wasn't even saying anything. He was just uh, started shooting. Uh, she was rushing to help other people. Um, obviously a very scary situation for this close knit church where uh, it was just a normal Sunday. People were just walking in and out of service and then this unfolded. Uh, we just heard from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron a few moments ago to give us the update on the situation. Let's listen in again as he recaps the situation. At 1115 this morning, as services were letting out of Church of Christ at Burnett Chapel on Pinhook Road, a gunman arrived in the parking lot. 
One woman who was walking to her vehicle was immediately fatally wounded by the gunman who we believe then entered the rear of the church. Other persons were still inside the church building. The gunman opened fire on them. Multiple rounds were fired inside the church. At this juncture, six persons, six innocent persons inside the church were wounded by gunfire. They have been taken to area hospitals. The gunman was wounded by a self-inflicted shot. He too has been taken to a hospital. One of the uh, church members, upon seeing the gunman doing this action inside the church, ran up and confronted him. He was pistol whipped by the gunman. This particular church member has a handgun carry permit. He went to his vehicle, got his gun, came back inside, and according to him, it was then that the gunman shot himself. Uh, it is our belief that the gunman's condition is not life-threatening. Uh, he is under police guard right now at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, this investigation uh, is going to be continuing, obviously, throughout the day and into the coming week. Uh, the persons who were wounded, the innocents, uh, the fire department is telling me that one person appears to be more serious than others. But again, all of those individuals have now been taken to hospitals. Uh, I have three female gunshot victims who were taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Three male gunshot victims taken to Vanderbilt. That includes the shooter. Uh, the man who was pistol whipped has been taken to Skyline Medical Center. And there is one additional gunshot wound victim who was taken to Skyline. A reunification area for family members who had persons at the church today who are concerned about their loved ones. A reunification area has been set up at Beautiful Gate Church at 12316 Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, that is the uh, extent of the information that I have for you at the moment. The gunman has been identified. Uh, certain investigative steps are being taken in regard to that identification, and we will be uh, releasing his identity in the short term. Again, that is the latest from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron at the scene that comes in from just a few moments ago. We want to continue to keep you updated on this developing story. Again, a shooting at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ on Pinhook Road in Antioch. One person is dead. Seven people were injured in this shooting. Um, as you just heard Don say, church was letting out at the time when the shots rang out. A gunman who was wearing a mask was in the parking lot. He confronted a woman in the parking lot, shot and killed her, then entered the church and started shooting. We just heard from a church member a few moments ago who said he didn't say anything. He just started shooting. Uh, people were certainly caught off guard. This was just a normal Sunday at the church. They heard multiple shots um, and were then instantly rushing to help people who were shot. We know three of the victims were women, three men uh, taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Two are in critical condition, four are in stable condition. Condition. We are continuing to get updates from Vanderbilt as well. News Channel 5's Jason Lamb is at the beautiful Gate Church. This is where people have been gathering to reconnect with family members and church members who may have been involved in the shooting. Jason, what are you learning out there? That's right. We just spoke with uh, one woman who arrived. Of course, this is that unification, reunification area that uh, we've been talking about, the place, the place for family members to come and be reunited with the uh, people who were inside the church or surrounding the church at the time. We've made our way past uh, that area right now down to Pinhook Road. And uh, as you can see, police have uh, stopped the traffic here uh, as this uh, situation continues to unfold. A lot of people, uh, maybe friends and family members, wanting to get a close look at what's exactly going on uh, just down the road by that police unit there. But we just spoke uh, with one woman, and this is just one example of all the stories that we're certainly going to be hearing uh, in, in the aftermath of this shooting. Uh, one person who was waiting for a family member uh, who had um, some, uh, mental, uh, some mental uh, handicaps and they were waiting for them at 
this, uh, the church, the reunification area. And so what we're going to probably see here, uh, according to her and some of the folks that we've been talking to, is uh, as these people are released from uh, perhaps getting interviewed by Metro Police here at the church, those people are going to be going to that reunification area just down the road. Uh, so we're likely to be seeing a lot of that in the next few minutes. Anything uh, more develops here, we'll be right back and let you know. Emily. All right, Jason, thanks so much. Of course, Metro Police still at the scene uh, working to determine the motive here. They have identified the gunman as a 26 year old African American man, but are not releasing any other information at this time. They have that scene locked down. They also have the bomb squad out there inspecting the gunman's car again, trying to figure out what exactly led up to this shooting. As Jason mentioned, area just down the road from the church. That's where people are going to be gathering after the fact. People wanting to reunite with family members. Any Anyone who was involved in the situation is currently uh, being interviewed by police as they continue to get more information uh, about what exactly happened, but they will eventually be meeting up at that church right down the road again, the beautiful Gate Church on Old Hickory Boulevard. New Channel 5's Chris Conti has been in Sky 5 throughout the morning. Uh, Chris, what are you seeing at the scene out there now? Well, Emily, just within the last couple of minutes, we actually were able to confirm with Metro Police what we have suspected for the last couple of hours, and that is that that blue SUV that we were kind of focusing our attention on, the same blue SUV that uh, Metro Bomb Squad members have been focusing their attention on, does belong to the gunman in this situation. We're going to switch it over now so that you can see uh, exactly what we're talking about. Uh, it is a blue, older model Nissan Xterra, uh, and we're going to send it back to you in the studio, Emily. I thank God so much, so oh, much for him. About 1220. Man, this tearing you apart inside now. It has. It has. What's your name? I'm Kimberly. Kimberly, what's your last name? Stallworth. Spell S T A L L W O R T H. Hi, I'm Tashia White. Spell your first name. T E A S H E A. Are you also a sister? This is my mom, and I'm, that's my oh. uncle. Roger's my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> what were you thinking? I'm oh, sorry. What was I thinking? Yeah, I mean, was well, I am somebody, I'm a very sensitive, emotional person, so I was in tears, but I was praying for the best, and I knew in my heart that he was okay. I knew it. I knew. I kept telling them that he was okay. They're like, well, why are you crying? I'm like, I, I can't help it. You know, it's a situation that you just kind of just don't know what to do, and, you know, your tears are a natural reaction. It's not your natural reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do all of you attend that church? No, we actually just left Church Christ of the Nazarene and then we flew here because we seen on Facebook several, you know, posts about what was going on here and we knew that he was here, so we had to get here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We left our church to be here. I'm just kind of coming in now. How are you? How are you doing? Great. We're so much better now that he's here. Now that he's here with us. What was that like just the past couple of hours? Not it's been horrible. It's, it's been really bad. It's, I wouldn't wish it on nobody. Even though we knew he was okay, it's still a, a waiting game and your mind is still everywhere. I wouldn't wish it on anybody and I pray for the people who lost somebody. That is, it's, it's unimaginable. Sir, how are you doing? No, I'm working. What's your first last name? Huh? What's your first and last name? What's your name? Why aren't you? And what's your last name? Bracey. Can you spell that for us? No. B R A C E Y. Uh, can you tell us what you witnessed today? Hmm. What did you see? Well, at church, it was a gunshot at church when I when I go when I go to the bottom bottom chapel of the church when I go to. It was a gunshot though. And you just heard there from witnesses uh, at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ who saw what unfolded earlier today. Obviously, they are still extremely emotional, uh, still coming to grips with what exactly happened here as a gunman opened fire inside their church, um, just as church was letting out at the time after a normal Sunday service. Let's head back to New Channel 5's Chris Conti, who is in Sky 5 over the scene with an update from there. Chris. 
Well, and Emily, as we were talking about a little earlier, what we have been able to confirm with Metro Police is that the blue SUV that they've been focusing a lot of their attention on did in fact belong to the gunman. Uh, of course, there's a lot of attention right now being focused on the inside of the church where Metro Police are going in and out, continuing their investigation into really what can only be described here as a cowardly act as this gunman walked into the back of the church where people were facing forward, not knowing what was coming at them. But we do want to give you a better idea of what is actually happening now in terms of active investigations happening on the ground. Uh, we're going to push into this blue SUV. It is a blue Nissan Xterra that Metro Police have told us uh, does belong to the gunman. You can see a SWAT member who is uh, in all of their attire right now. Uh, it, we're, it's unclear whether or not they're going to detonate something in there, but they have been uh, using some of their equipment uh, to pull out the back window. Uh, they didn't go in with uh, the machine that we usually see them use, uh, the, the robot that sometimes is used in situations like this, because what we have uh, been able to gather from Metro Police is that they do not believe that there are any explosives inside of this car, but clearly, uh, given the severity of the situation that unfolded inside of this church, uh, they are not taking any chances as to what could be inside of this gunman's car. Uh, they have been working on this now. Probably we've been watching them for the last two or three hours uh, kind of scour this vehicle. Unclear what this man uh, in the SWAT suit is going to be doing here. Uh, but clearly, I, I mean, you don't see them wearing this kind of uh, this kind of outfit that often. Uh, we're going to kind of keep watching this here. We're thinking maybe they're going to detonate something inside of the car. They have a uh, they've run a cable. You can see there uh, one of the bomb squad members has uh, over in the tree there has run a cable from that tree over to the SUV that belongs to the gunman. Uh, and we're kind of just watching and waiting to see what's going to happen. Uh, you can see here, uh, just kind of in the background, right in, in the middle of the screen there, this is the church where all this unfolded. Uh, to the left of the screen, we're being careful not to show it, uh, but almost, I would say, probably 20 feet away uh, from that SUV that belongs to the gunman uh, is the body of that elderly woman who was shot in the parking lot and did not survive. Uh, she was killed instantly. Uh, obviously, that is the saddest part of this entire situation. This uh, poor woman who was just trying to leave church, as she probably usually does every Sunday, uh, and will not be returning home tonight. Uh, it's just a really unfortunate situation that's been unfolding on the ground there. Uh, but again, we are waiting to see what Metro Police are going to do uh, with this uh, car that belongs to the gunman uh, in terms of giving them any kind of uh, insight as to what his motive may have been uh, or what maybe he was possibly trying to do. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like from Don Aaron uh, that he wasn't going to stop with the six people who he killed, or excuse me, the six people who he injured inside the church. Uh, that his intent was to, to keep going, uh, indiscriminately shooting people until somehow he ended up shooting himself in the chest. Uh, but again, if you see the back window there of that Nissan Xterra right next to the uh, white Cadillac Escalade, they have taken out the back window, uh, and Metro Police have some kind of cables that they've run uh, into the back of the Nissan Xterra there. I'm not a, I'm not a bomb expert, so I'm not gonna kind of uh, be able to tell you exactly what they're doing. Uh, but we've just kind of been watching them uh, take care, try to figure out what's going on with this SUV. The church doors there, uh, right in the middle of the screen there, that is where the gunman walked in at 11.15 this morning when all those church goers were getting ready to leave. Uh, you can only imagine the kind of horror that unfolded inside of this church uh, as those gun gunshots started ringing out. Uh, it's remarkable to think about the Usher, who maybe saved some lives here as he took the situation into his own hands. Uh, Bob, if you can pull out just a little bit, uh, bottom right hand of your screen there, uh, backs of the shirts of those men who are up against that SUV, say ATF, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, uh, possibly some federal agents who have been brought in to kind of help in this investigation. Uh, but again, what we've been watching just kind of uh, here over the last few minutes is this uh, person from Metro Bomb Squad in their full attire going back and forth. Uh, unclear why they took out the back window here, uh, but we did kind of notice them open the side doors and then shut them again. Uh, you can see him uh, You can see him kind of working there to, I guess it looks like he's trying to pull some of those cables. Uh, but for perspective, I mean, look at how close uh, this gunman's car is to the front of the, sh the front of the church, and we're talking probably only, I don't know, 40, 50 feet uh, that he had to take to get inside the church to kind of uh, unfold this carnage that we saw earlier today. Uh, hidden by the trees right now, uh, we're going to still be careful to not show uh, the body of this woman who is still in the parking lot, clearly. You know, this is 
uh, this is a very active scene, and there's a lot of things that are being uh, taken into account here. Uh, they, uh, we're going to send it back to you in the studio, Emily. All right, Chris, thanks so much for that update as he is a great vantage point of that investigation that is ongoing as uh, police work to determine the motive in the shooting, what exactly led up to it. Let's head back out to New Channel 5's Matthew Torres, who has been at the beautiful Gate Church, uh, where family members are reuniting with people who witnessed the shooting. Matthew, what are you hearing there? Well, Emily, we are actually finally seeing some of the church members from Burnett Chapel here at the church, and we are talking about some of those moments that you finally see, the emotional moments of them reuniting with their loved ones and other church members. If we can just walk to the other side, as we are seeing them flock here right now, you can tell it is a very heartfelt moment. This is just uh, an opportunity to at least feel some sort of security and safety despite what uh, scary things happened today. So, so far we have this young individual, looks like he has some bandage in his left foot. Uh, he was kind of carried here. You can see all of them right now. This is the touching moment that they have been waiting for for quite some time. Even though it may be, have been a couple of hours, this has probably been the longest two hours of their entire life. And you can hear kind of the murmuring right now because this is that uh, people are now just making their way here. I just want people to really just soak this all in. We saw tears, we saw happiness, we saw just a variety of emotions as now they are reuniting with their loved ones, family members, and even just members of the community. If we can go to this side, because you can see where they're coming from, this is kind of the way in, and some of these are the church members uh, from the church who at least are doing well. Let's see if we can at least talk to them. As scary and as tough as what happened earlier, this is kind of the opportunity that we get to see of people coming together once again. How are, how's everyone doing here? Um, well, to be expected, it's a very sad situation, but we're very thankful that the community has came and been supportive to all of our family members. Now, were you at the church this morning? Not today. I did not go. I have a little one sick, and I didn't get to go today. And I'm assuming these are the family members of yes. one of the church members? Yes, Miss Mary. That is her family member. They are previous family members also of the church. And every, you know they've all moved, and so they not they don't go there anymore. But Miss Mary, 44 years still at Burnett Chapel, and obviously she's with her family, so we want to give her that moment. What has she told you happened? Um, she just said that one of the other ladies had went into the restroom, and she was in there, and that when she went to step out the door, she hunted, heard a gunshot. She locked the door, and they hid in the stalls. That's you as a church member, what goes through your mind seeing what happened, learning about what happened, and now seeing this? It is very overwhelming. I, uh, earlier when I heard it, honestly, I thought I was going to have a panic attack, but I'm so thankful to see the ones that are arriving and that they're safe. It's a very small community, and we, we're a very tight-knit church, but we're a very open church. We love for people to come and visit. It's a great place to be. So are the majority of these church members, or are they just family members? Um, coming in right here are now family. They were church members, but that, they're not there any longer. This was the um, previous pastor there, Daryl Ward. He was our previous minister. And But I know they're releasing some of these are church members that were there today. The little boy laying on the couch, he, um, he sprained his ankle because they had him locking up the kids in the kids' room putting up chairs, barricading the door, and so he was trying to run around and save all the little kids, and he sprained his ankle doing that today. And once again, this is a live look of the reunion with some of the church members, with their family members. If there's one thing that we can do is to show some sort of positive angle to this entirely tragic situation. Please pray for our whole community, not only our family as ch and family church members, but also as the whole community in general. 
So once again, we are at the, uh, the church, just a quarter of a mile from Burnett Chapel. And once again, that touching moment, if we can go this way, just want to show you the church that they are able to stay. Um, they have opened up their doors here. And so some of them are obviously just now getting here. And so we are able to see them getting ready for whoever is going to take some type of refuge here at the moment as they're bringing out the chairs and getting ready for all the family members and the church members who were impacted by this shooting. And so Miss Mary is one of the ladies that we were able to at least witness reunite with her family. Yeah. I'm glad that you guys are doing okay. I'm Matthew Torres with News Channel 5. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, as best as can be expected. So far, what did you guys witness? Um, I mean, I can't even really describe it. I mean, um, there is people injured. Um, luckily, we made it out. Um, we're still praying, and that's about it. What did you hear? Did you hear the gunshot? Oh, yeah, we heard the gunshots. You heard that. The church got over, and... You heard three shots in the parking lot, and that's when we knew it wasn't fireworks. We knew it was a gunshot. What happened right after you heard the gunshots? I mean, I grabbed my daughter, and we ran to where the baptism room is, where they change, um, to, like, duck and cover. We were trying to see if there was locks on the doors. There was no locks. I kept trying to tell her to stay down, trying to throw this big curtain where they changed behind, under, um, just trying to hold the doors, you know, as best as we could. And so you guys were, were interviewed by police before getting here? Yeah, they escorted us over here. And who are you here with today? Um, well, my daughter left, um, and this is my son here. As he was with the little kids in the room, um, he had sprained his ankle. He was trying. He's the oldest one in there. He's ten, so he was trying to help the teacher, Miss Terry, like barricade the doors with a couch and whatever they had in the room. And I saw that he sprained his ankle. Yeah, trying to run. He's. I'm assuming it's a sprain. It's definitely not broken, but. He's done something. And how old is your son? <laughs> Ten. Can we talk to him? Mm -hmm. If he wants. And what's yeah. his name? Jeremiah. Hey, Jeremiah. I saw that you have this. We are told that you kind of uh, helped barricade the classroom. What can you tell us? Um, we somebody just opened the door and we just heard like three gunshots and um, the little girl shut the door and I heard somebody say, "Get down." And we just started grabbing the couches and the chairs, and we did everything we can, like, barricade it and stuff. But then a police officer came in and said, we got to go, we got to go and stuff. So we literally don't know what's going on. So we ran out, and there was this, like, mat that was wet. And then my, like, and then my leg just, like, turned and popped. And I was like, I can't walk no more. I can't walk. How did you know to do all of that, to put all the chairs against the door? Because when we heard the gunshots, we, we thought it was firecrackers or something. And then, like, somebody said, be quiet, and then we shut all the doors and stuff. And we realized there's no locks on them, and people were crying and stuff, and I didn't know what to do. So I was like, can we, like, barricade the doors and stuff? And we can, like, do all that. But right when we're from about to close all the doors, a police officer came in, and then they say, stay in here. And then we just barricade, and then he came in again, and then that's why I, like, sprained my ankle. So this was Sunday school? Yes. So you guys were all able to get out. What was that like when you finally got out of the doors? When we got out, we were just, like, nervous because we didn't know if he was, like, arrested, dead, shot on the ground or something. So we were just like, oh my gosh, why is this happening? And we were just like crying and stuff. And then when we got outside, we saw five people on the ground and stuff. And when the police got there, we saw our preacher just right there and then when we started to leave and stuff we saw this person on the ground with a blanket over them and I was like did somebody die and I was like okay 
there are six people dead. I do not know what to do. I don't know if my family's alive yet. So I'm just freaking out. So. Well, Jeremiah, you're now with your mom and your sibling. I'm sure you're not freaking out anymore. Yeah. When I realized they're alive, I just started like pouring out crying. And that's like, I know I'm 10 and I'm supposed to be tough, but I just, I just couldn't hold in though. I just, I just couldn't hold it in. What do you want to say to your other church members, to your friends who are there inside the classroom with you? I just want to say I'm happy that none of them got hurt and stuff. I'm just happy they're alive. And I know they lost a lot of people in their lives, but I know they're going to be okay. That's why I know. Can you, sorry, I get, got here a little bit late. Can you back up to when you heard things and where you were? So that was Jeremiah, the 10-year-old. You just heard the story of what he recounted happened at the Sunday school as soon as they heard the gunshots, as now several family members are reuniting with other church members. So. This is a moment that they have been waiting for for quite some time, but this is that heartfelt moment that we got to see. And even though he says he is supposed to be a brave 10 year old, I think it's safe to say what he did really did help a lot of kids, at least during this scary situation. We will stay here at the church as possibly more members are making their way here. We'll send back over to you, Emily. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. Roy Johnson joining us now as we continue our coverage of this developing story. Certainly an emotional scene there as we hear from a 10 year old with such composure and the way he reacted to the situation. So very brave Amazing. and so well spoken. Um, Jeremiah, really well done. I mean, he did everything right that you would hope in such a terrifying situation, right? Incredible that he reacted the way he did. And, and again, as you saw, church members starting to reunite with their family members there just down the road at Beautiful Gate Church on Old Hickory Boulevard. Um, if you're just joining us, we want to recap exactly what's been going on. Obviously, a very eventful morning here. This all started at 1115 at the Burnett uh, Chapel Church of Christ in Antioch. We are now hearing one person is dead. Seven were injured when a gunman opened fire um, inside the church. That's right. That one person dead, we understand, was in the parking lot. So perhaps the first person uh, the gunman encountered and then went into the church where we understand at this hour there are still some people inside that church and police are close to letting them leave the church and perhaps go home or go down to the beautiful gate church for that reunification uh, area. Alexandra Cohen has been on the scene. She gives us an update from there. Alexandra, what do you know? We just talked to the police chaplain and they tell us they're letting out family members who are still inside the church in waves. They're being taken by unmarked vehicles to the nearby church where Matthew Torres is to be reunited with their families. But as you can see, this crime scene is still extremely wide. Several people have come here just to try to make contact with some of their family members who still may be questioned by police. Just moments ago, if you were watching our live coverage, we actually interviewed someone who was inside the church when the gunman entered and opened fire. She said she jumped on their pastor, Joey Span, and applied pressure to his gunshot wound. At the same time, they were yelling for people to get out. And as you heard from Matthew Torres, it appears the kids were not in the sanctuary wary when the gunfire erupted, but they were in a nearby room and they were able to barricade themselves inside that room. If you're just tuning in, it was harrowing moments as the church let out. There was a woman in the parking lot who actually parked close to the gunman's blue SUV and were told he shot and killed her in the parking lot. He'd made entry through the rear of the building and that's when he opened fire. Six people were shot. They were taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. While all of this was happening, one of the ushers actually tackled the gunman. According to the witness, he tackled him. There was a scuffle. At some point, the gunman's gun went off during that fight and it, he shot himself in the leg. At that point, the usher ran out to his personal vehicle, grabbed his personal gun out of his car and ran back inside the church where he was able to hold the gunman at gunpoint until police arrived on air with the Metro Police Department is calling that usher a hero for his quick actions. It's unknown if there would have been more fatalities if he hadn't have stepped in. We have a police officer who is coming by again. This is still a very active scene, so we are just moving out of the way here and what we have 
been watching um, develop here at the scene is they've surrounded that blue SUV, which according to Don Aaron is the gunman's vehicle. Some of the canine officers who are bomb detection dogs as well as accelerant detection dogs, they actually made some signals to police when they were near that SUV, which is why they have kept the public so far back at this time. They said there were some items inside his SUV that just didn't look quite right. So that's why they have moved people way back. You can see the crowd have gathered some of these people still waiting on their family members who were inside the church during this active shooting situation to get out. We remain here uh, juggling the scene as well as the press conference. As soon as we get more information on the gunman's identity, we'll let you know. But uh, Metro Police have confirmed he's a 26 year old male from Rutherford County. They have not released his name at this point, but he is in stable condition after police say he accidentally shot himself self during the scuffle with that usher. Again, we did just want to update you from the scene here in between press conferences. As soon as Don Aaron comes back to give us more updates, we'll head back over to the media staging area and be live from there. Emily and Rory, back to you. All right, Alexander, thank you for that update. Again, as police continue to zero in on the gunman's blue SUV, they're keeping a close watch on that, as well as talking to people who witnessed the shooting. Yeah, and so many people were there wit and heard the gunshots and witnessed what happened, and we're, we're starting to hear from more and more of them. I want to get uh, down to the Five Alert Center. Dan Kennedy is downstairs. Uh, Dan, what do you have as far as reaction? Well, I can tell you, I uh, want to quickly brief on some of the agencies that are assisting with this. Of course, Metro Nashville Police is going are going to be the lead in this. Uh, it's possible more federal agents will get involved as this continues to progress. Uh, I also just reached out to the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. We know by looking at some of our aerials a moment ago that they have agents on scene. They're in the parking lot of that church. Uh, to their extent in this investigation, they say they're continuing to follow up with the firearm information and augmenting our resources with Metro Nashville Police Department. ATF's Gun Crime Intelligence Center is focusing on the background information along with Metro. So ATF is going to be able to help Metro National Police track down where this gain, gun came from, where this 26 year old obtained it, if it was by legal purposes or means, and the history of this gun. So we can uh, officially confirm just in the last couple minutes that the ATF is now involved as well. We are also getting reaction from politicians and those around the Nashville area, including uh, Mayor Megan Barry, who issued this statement just moments ago, saying that this is a terrible tragedy for our city. My heart aches for the family and friends of the deceased, as well as for the wounded victims and their loved ones. Their lives have been forever changed, as has the life of the faith community at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. You heard in that Matthew Torres interview a few moments ago of folks with the congregation asking for prayers, and they're certainly getting that. And quickly to uh, quote another tweet, this one from Representative Chuck Fleischman. He says, a shooting in a place of worship is a despicable, heartless action. Back to you. Thanks so much for that update. And we're also continuing to follow what's going on at the scene at this hour. New Channel 5's Chris Conti is in Sky 5 above that area. Chris, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Well, Emily, we are continuing to watch the Metro Bomb Squad, who's being assisted by the ATF right now, kind of hone in on the gunman's car. They have been on the scene here since 11.15 this morning, and they have been scouring his vehicle, seeing if it can give them any type of clues, insight as to why this occurred, how this occurred. Uh, possibly if there was uh, some kind of motive here, uh, there, there's probably there's a, likely going to be a lot of information inside uh, of that vehicle. Uh, again, Alexandra was mentioning that uh, they were unsure if there may have been some explosives in it at the beginning here, so they tried to uh, be very cautious about it. They do not believe that there are any explosives in it now, but uh, there are some items in there that clearly they are a little worried about because they have been uh, kind of spending the last probably two hours uh, some of Metro Police going in and out of the car there. Uh, we were watching earlier, it seemed to be that uh, some of the guys, some of the agents who were working on this car as we're watching this uh, officer right now open the hood of this blue Nissan Xterra. Uh, clearly they, they don't believe that there's any imminent danger right at this moment because uh, the guys who were going over to this car earlier were uh, just armed, I mean, head to toe. Uh, with the kind of gear that you know would protect them, if perhaps uh, God forbid something were to go off, uh, we're getting a it looks like a thumbs up. Uh, this agent just gave to some of his colleagues who are watching from across the way there, uh, as he just checked out the hood. One can only assume that that means that 
uh, you know, that everything inside the front of the car there was okay. Uh, we, as we kind of pull out here, we can give you a better vantage point of uh, where uh, some of those just uh, unbelievable reunions are happening, where Matthew Torres is at the uh, beautiful church there. Uh, this is probably only, I don't know, I would say four or 500 yards down the street uh, where some of these uh, members of the Burnett Chapel Church have been taken to so that they can reunite with some of their family members. Uh, clearly the view here from 1,200 feet in the air does nothing to uh, kind of explain what's going on inside this church there. Just those interviews are just, uh, they're heart wrenching. I mean, it's just giving you an idea of the pure carnage and, and hell that unfolded inside of the church there this morning as that gunman came in. Uh, people literally hiding behind couches and chairs, trying to keep themselves safe as people were being shot around them, uh, not knowing you know, where their family members were inside of the church. Uh, it, it, it does appear that after the gunman got out of his car, he probably walked no more than 10 or 15 feet where he encountered that one elderly woman who he shot and killed and she died immediately on the scene there. Uh, and then he turned his attention to the rest of the congregation where he would uh, continue to unleash his fury uh, in an indiscriminate manner according to Metro Police spokesman Don Aaron where he just fired at random. None of these people had any idea that this was coming. Uh, we have heard some reports that uh, people who have been coming to this church for a very, very long time did not recognize this gentleman. They do not know who he is. It, it, it appears that uh, he was not a regular church member or a parishioner uh, in this church. Again, as you're kind of watching the gunman's car here, it, it seems as though from the air uh, that they have kind of neutralized this situation to the extent uh, that is possible as a lot of these guys who are now going over to uh, begin digging through the gunman's car are not wearing the uh, heavy armor that we were seeing earlier in some of the SWAT guys. Uh, but hopefully, you know, whatever's in this SUV gives them some clues as to what may have happened here. Uh, we're trying to get a better idea of some of the things they've pulled out here so far. It's just, it's hard to see from up here in the air, but you can see uh, this guy, this person with a gun didn't have to travel very far to get into the front doors of the church. Uh, the back of the church, uh, unclear where people were, you know, as this kind of was all unfolding, but as you heard Don Aaron say much earlier today, uh, you know, a lot of these folks were just sitting in pews facing the front of the chapel there and did not see this gentleman come in except for the usher who it can only be described as a hero here who managed to stop him at some point by going back out to the parking lot. Uh, in terms of the reunions that are happening, you also have to remember here that in the parking lot still sit parishioners' cars, vehicles. Uh, the, you know, this unfolded so quickly at 11.15 this morning uh, that folks didn't have time to get their cars out of the parking lot. Clearly, they were only concerned about staying alive and helping some of their parishioners who had just been shot right in front of them during this normal Sunday service uh, that has happened so regularly and uh, without incident for years. This church has been around for a very long time and never did anyone here ever expect that something like this would happen. Uh, just, we've been talking a little bit about location to give you some perspective. We are probably about three miles to the west of Percy Priest Lake here. Uh, off to the north of us right now is uh, Four Corners Marina. Just to give you an idea if you're kind of wondering where this kind of all unfolded here. We're kind of towards the back end of Percy Priest Lake. Uh, the Metro Police still, as we were talking about earlier, do have some folks inside there who they've been talking to, uh, trying to get a better idea. Uh, witnesses, you know, who were not injured and had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, there are so many people whose lives have been changed by what happened here at 11:15 this morning. I mean, it is uh, it is going to be hard for folks to forget the the carnage and terror that unfolded in this church uh, and. They will likely never be the same. Uh, something like this happens and it changes you forever. I mean, it, how, how could it not? Just going into your normal Sunday service, doing something that you think uh, is going to be peaceful, trying to you know, spend some moments with God, and then it turns into this. Uh, it's just been a really, really harrowing morning for a lot of folks uh, as we continue to watch here as the uh, ATF has now moved in. Uh, with some other members of Metro Police, Dan Kennedy talking there that this is, there are a lot of agencies who have come in to help Metro here uh, as, you know, they try to put together the pieces of what unfolded here. We're going to continue to monitor the, monitor this situation from up in the air. Uh, for, for right now, we're going to send it back to you, Rory and Emily in the studio.
Chris Conti, live in Sky 5. We appreciate it so much, and so much information is coming in uh, as this story develops, I including we've heard Emily's reports not confirmed that the preacher there at, at the church, Joey Spann, had been shot. Mm -hmm. That's not confirmed yet, but we do know that, that he was there and got an interesting uh, bit of information about his past. Uh, something that happened to him six years ago when he was coaching the Good Pasture Girls basketball team, right? Yeah, this is again just into our newsroom, but what we're hearing is uh, he was actually considered dead six years ago after he had a cardiac arrest while he was coaching the Good Pasture Good Pasture girls basketball team. This was against Lipscomb High School. Someone who had a defibrillator at the time was able to revive him about 15 minutes after he lost consciousness. Again, this is Joey Spann, uh, the minister at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. We have heard from people at the scene. He, as well as his wife, were shot in this exchange earlier today. We're still waiting to get that confirmed from police, but obviously yeah. um, a heartbreaking situation for him regardless. Being A that second all, lease on life and now this happens. And now on, right? all but, unfolds uh, at his church. Yeah. If yeah. indeed he was shot, that, that he'll be okay. And, and speaking of the victims, many of them at Vanderbilt Medical Center, we want to check in with Kimberly Davis, who is live there. Kimberly, what do you know? Rory, well, Emily just said this is a heartbreaking situation, and the outpouring of support from other churches in the community has been seen for sure this afternoon. We just spoke with a pastor from a church in Fairview. He said his church was in the Antioch area, and he says when a tragedy happens like this to one church, it happens to us all, and there have been a lot of people going in and out of the hospital saying they are just here to check on the patients who are here and making sure that they are, are okay. Again, there are six patients being treated here at Vanderbilt University Medical Center who were involved in that church shooting. Now, I just got an update from a spokesperson here at the hospital, and she is saying right now, they still have six patients, but things could be changing. She said she will be coming out momentarily to give us an update on that. Now, Don Aaron, a spokesperson with Metro Police, just told us that the gunman sounds like he accidentally shot himself in the chest, and that's how he ended up being transported here to the hospital. At last check, when I spoke with the hospital, they told us that two people were in critical condition. The two people who were in critical condition both had torso or gunshot wounds to the chest. And now Don Aaron is saying that the gunman no longer is in critical condition. His injuries are believed to be non-life threatening. And I did check with the hospital spokesperson here and she says whatever Don Aaron says, he got that information for them. So it looks like just one person is in critical condition here at the hospital. The other four are stable. Again, that gunman has not been identified. All the police department is telling us is that he is a 26 year old black man. As you can see, there are still officers here on the scene. There are three Metro police officer vehicles here. They have been here since we arrived on the scene around 1215 this afternoon and they are not leaving. They are waiting for the for the gunman to receive his treatment and of course he will be taken into custody now the hospital says they will not be speaking with us until later on in the day maybe at this hour they say they will not be talking to us on camera but they are telling us they can't tell us much information because of privacy issues so we'll stay out here and hopefully have another update for you once that spokesperson comes out here on the scene back to you guys in the studio Okay, Kim, thank you. And of course, as this continues to unfold, we are hearing more from witnesses who were there, saw part of this. Uh, many of them have been moved to the beautiful Gate Church, which is again just down the road from the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ, where they are slowly mm -hmm. reuniting with their loved ones. And some emotional scenes we saw live right here. Our Matthew Torres is there. The cameras were rolling and you see the people coming in and just embracing one another. Um, and of course, the church community has really come together to, to help the people from Burnett Chapel. Uh, we heard just a, a few minutes ago from a young man, first his mother, and then we heard from Jeremiah, 10 years old, laying there on a sofa because he injured his ankle when all of this happened, but showed such composure. And we wanted to roll a bit of that tape to show you what he said. He was there in the church with his mom when they heard, I guess they were gathered in the lobby, they heard several, three gunshots outside in the parking lot and immediately knew that it was gunshots and they took action and here's what Jeremiah had to say. We just heard like three gunshots and um, the little girl shut the door 
and I heard somebody say, get down, and we just started grabbing the couches and the chairs, and we did everything we can, like, barricade it and stuff, but then a police officer came in and said, we gotta go, we gotta go, and stuff, so we literally don't know what's going on. Again, so well-spoken, Jeremiah Reese. Uh, who is now recovering and doing well, and he's one of the young heroes, I would say. Certainly, and, and News Channel 5's Matthew Torres did that interview just a few moments ago. He has been at the Beautiful Gate Church where people are reuniting with their family members. He stands by now for us to give us an update. Who, um, Of course, Matthew, we're all wondering more about the minister, Joey Spann, how he's mm -hmm. doing. What are you hearing about that? Well, since we got here, we actually heard from the pastors of this church who said they heard uh, that Joey Spann was shot somewhere in the chest. As far as his condition, that is, of course, what uh, Kimberly Davis has been monitoring this whole time. But we are told that he was at Vanderbilt. In fact, we interviewed Joey Spann's friend of 40 years and also a Church of Christ preacher down in Brentwood. He says he hasn't been able to talk with uh, Joey or his wife, Peggy. Uh, uh, but again, scary situation and moments for him when he learned uh, from other members and really through his uh, funnel of friends that uh, Joey was shot in the chest. Again, that is according to a longtime friend and another Church of Christ preacher. He also said that uh, apparently he is uh, an employee of Nashville Christian Schools and that he was uh, an alumnus of uh, Lipscomb University. But of course, this is just a little bit of the information that we are learning here as uh, uh, family members reunited with the church members here at Beautiful Gate Church. As far as uh, that, again, the minister, Joey Spann, uh, we are told that he was someone who was very kind, very friendly, and kept that church in a close, uh, tight-knit community. So we are hoping to uh, get more information here, but uh, as far as what people are saying, that he was shot in the chest. That is according to at least three other people, in fact, three preachers here at the church since we have been here uh, for now the last two hours. So once we find out more, of course, we will pass that along. But again, beautiful moments here as we saw some family members reunite with those church members who went through this terrifying ordeal. Roy and Emily, back to you. All right, Matthew, thank you so much. And as he mentioned, certainly still very emotional scene out there as people are reuniting with their family members. Uh, we have heard from several people that this was an older congregation at this church, a very close knit congregation. Um, obviously, many people heartbroken, even if they weren't there and they didn't witness that uh, what happened, they're still very, very troubled by what went on earlier today. That's right. Obviously, a huge police response to this uh, shooting that happened at about 1115 this morning in Antioch. Uh, not only Metro Police Department, but many other law enforcement agencies, including we've heard now the TBI, the ATF mm -hmm. on the scene checking out that SUV. Don Aaron, the spokesman for Metro uh, Police, uh, held a brief news conference, I'd say within the past hour or so, maybe a little longer than that. And we want to kind of recue that in case you're just joining us because he shared a lot of good information. Let's listen into that once again. At 11.15 this morning, as services were letting out of Church of Christ at Burnett Chapel on Pinhook Road, a gunman arrived in the parking lot. One woman who was walking to her vehicle was immediately fatally wounded by the gunman, who we believe then entered the rear of the church. Other persons were still inside the church building. The gunman opened fire on them. Multiple rounds were fired inside the church. At this juncture, six persons, six innocent persons inside the church were wounded by gunfire. They have been taken to area hospitals. The gunman was wounded by a self-inflicted shot. He too has been taken to a hospital. One of the uh, church members upon seeing the gunman doing this action inside the church, ran up and confronted him. He was pistol whipped by the gunman. This particular church member has a handgun carry permit. He went to his vehicle, got his gun, came back inside, and according to him, it was then that the gunman shot himself. Uh, it is our belief that the gunman's condition is not life-threatening. Uh, he is under police guard right now at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. 
Uh, this investigation uh, is going to be continuing, obviously, throughout the day and into the coming week. Uh, the persons who were wounded, the innocents, uh, the fire department is telling me that one person appears to be more serious than others. But again, all of those individuals have now been taken to hospitals. Uh, I have three female gunshot victims who were taken to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Three male gunshot victims taken to Vanderbilt. That includes the shooter. Uh, the man who was pistol whipped has been taken to Skyline Medical Center, and there is one additional gunshot wound victim who was taken to Skyline. A reunification area for family members who had persons at the church today uh, who are concerned about their loved ones. A reunification area has been set up at Beautiful Gate Church at 12316 Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, that is the uh, extent of the information that I have for you at the moment. The gunman has been identified. Uh, certain investigative steps are being taken in regard to that identification, and we will be uh, releasing his identity in the short term. Wow, and that Don is, Aaron. Yeah, that's the latest from Metro Police spokesperson Don Aaron. Again, what we know about the gunman at this point, a 26-year-old African-American man from Rutherford County, that's all police are able to release at this time. That's right, and we don't know if there is a connection with the church or not, but again, a lot of good detail there from Don Aaron about what happened, and we know that he left his car running, so just pulled right up. Uh, apparently, there was that confrontation in the parking lot, and then he entered uh, the back side of the church, and we're seeing some... Some of the people, you, as we mentioned, an older congregation there at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ. Uh, one witness said that it's a small congregation, maybe about 60 members. Um, and they, they were celebrating, one witness said, uh, a yard sale that they had held, a fundraiser in, in the days uh, leading up to today to try to send some of the children to a Bible camp. And they uh, had wrapped up, I believe, their service and were many of them gathered in the lobby to celebrate the fact that they had reached a fundraising goal. And that's when they heard the gunshots and obviously the chaos just broke out at that point. Yeah, and, and certainly, as we've mentioned, a uh, very close-knit church. Um, this was just a normal Sunday service. Yeah. They were just going in like they normally do. Um, and as they were letting out, that's when all the chaos erupted. And we did speak to someone earlier today who kind of talked about how close-knit that area was. It's a pretty close-knit congregation, it really is. Very friendly, open to everybody. Anybody's welcome to come. Again, uh, a, a lot of people just kind of reacting with shock, obviously, just a normal, quiet Sunday morning, and all of a sudden gunfire erupts. But so many people that we've heard from, Emily, seem to just kind of uh, do the right thing immediately. They knew what to do. They went to protect children, barricade themselves. Uh, others just went to hide or run. And then, of course, we have the one hero who actually confronted the gunman. Yeah, the, church, the church usher who uh, happened to be inside the church when shots rang out, uh, confronted the gunman. He was pistol whipped in that exchange. He then went out to the parking lot to get his personal gun out of his car. When he came back into the church, that's when the gunman shot himself in the chest uh, during some kind of exchange there. Again, the gunman has been transported to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. We are waiting for more information on his condition um, and, of course, the motive. We don't know what led up to this. We don't know why he acted the way that he did. Um, but as we mentioned, his blue SUV was parked very close to the church. That is obviously at the center of the investigation right now. Um, as a bomb squad has been out there, they've been inspecting that car hoping that it maybe provides some right. clues. Absolutely, and that's protocol. They have to be very, very careful. Uh, they don't know what they might find inside uh, inside that car. So I understand Don Aaron is giving us an update. Once again, let's go live to the scene and listen in. Emmanuel Cadega Sampson. I'm going to spell his name, E-M-A-N-U-E-L, middle name K-I-D-E-G-A, last name Sampson, S A M. S -O -N. He is 25 years old. As I mentioned in an earlier briefing, he sustained a gunshot wound, uh, probably from his own will, it was, from his own weapon, as he was in a struggle with one of the church ushers. It's my understanding from Vanderbilt University Medical Center that Samson is being medically cleared to be released. Our detectives are obtaining at this moment a murder warrant 
as well as numerous attempted murder arrest warrants against Sampson. So as he's coming out of the hospital, he will be immediately in Metro Police custody. Uh, our detectives will attempt to interview him and he will be jailed tonight on a number of very serious charges, at least uh, one homicide warrant and multiple attempted homicide warrants. I have now the names of the persons who were shot at the church this morning. William Jenkins, age 83, who is in stable condition at Vanderbilt. Marlene Jenkins, age 84, in stable condition at Vanderbilt. David Spann, age 60, who is in critical stable condition at Vanderbilt. Peggy Spann, age 65, stable condition at Vanderbilt. And Linda Bush, age 68, stable condition at Vanderbilt. At Skyline Medical Center is Catherine, Catherine with a K, Dickerson, age 64, in stable condition. Also at Skyline is Robert Engel, that's E-N-G-L-E, -E, age 22. Mr. Engel is the usher at the church this morning who confronted the gunman and we believe is the hero today. Uh, with me now is uh, Nashville Police Chief Steve Anderson, uh, who will have uh, a statement, then we'll take some questions. So shortly after 11 today, we received an active shooter, active killer call at, at, at this location, and our officers responded, as did the Metropolitan National Fire Department. And as you just heard, uh, uh, we have uh, one person received fatal gunshot, uh, six persons injured. Uh, what I would say about Mr. Robert Engel, the usher, uh, he physically engaged the shooter, and during the struggle, the shooter was, was shot. Uh, at this time, we don't know exactly how that happened, whether he shot himself or whether uh, the gun discharged during the struggle. Uh, Mr. Engel uh, sustained serious injuries himself, and uh, he's the hero. Uh, he's the person that stopped this madness, and so uh, we're very, very, very grateful to, uh, to him. Uh, questions? Was Mr. Engel shot or just beat? We think he would just beat at this time with, with the pistol, yes. Still under investigation? Still under investigation. Do we have any idea what Mr. Sampson, why he came to this church? We've received some preliminary information, but uh, at this point we want to fully develop it before we, uh, before we release it. But it could be a variety of reasons, and we always take that into account. A lot of activity around his vehicle. Have you found anything? Uh, nothing, nothing of note. Nothing of note, but we were very cautious. And uh, as you can see, we had our hazardous device personnel, our bomb squad, uh, to carefully examine it because we, we were very concerned. But, but at this point, nothing of note. Chief, we had one witness from inside say she heard a lot of gunshots, more than might have come from one handgun. Well, as far as we know, they've just won at this time. But uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, one weapon can discharge multiple rounds, and you can see the number of people that were wounded by gunfire. There was supposed to be a church service tonight at 5 o'clock here, and there's a number of church services in Nashville. What would you like to say to the people in Nashville after this incident? Well, I think uh, just... Uh, First of all, recognize the bravery of the individual that stopped this, this madness, uh, Mr. Engel. Uh, but for everybody to gather together and uh, uh, anywhere that one or two or three or ten people are gathered is uh, subject to something like this. But uh, we certainly don't want to let uh, this interfere with our lives. We go about our lives as usual and we take this into account. Uh, many uh, people have called on us to uh, receive training. Uh, at churches and businesses, what happens if an active killer comes on their premises? And we're always happy to go out uh, and provide that training. Chief, should church doors be locked on Sunday Well, I'd leave that to the individual uh, church organizations, but uh, it would be uh, somewhat uh, uh, unchristian like maybe to lock your doors. And I think that most churches recognize that at the same time taking uh, uh, cautious procedures. I understand a lot of churches have. A security ministry that uh, a lot of them actually have people that uh, that's what they do for the church. Uh, does uh, the police have an opinion about efforts like that? Well, I think uh, any t anytime any organization can do anything to secure their premises, as long as they do it in a safe and cautious manner with the proper training, uh, we would support that. Can they reach out to the police for any of that training? You can re reach out to us for, for anything, anything at all. Uh, we're happy to come 